from a fight choreography background and a stunt background, so the fights become really special to me. It is definitely one of my strengths as a director to have had that experience in front of the camera as a stunt performer and then be involved in action films. I have an incredible stunt team. Greg Rementer was the main fight choreographer and he directed Second Unit. The team has been putting together some really incredible action sequences and today we're going to take some time to look into some of the techniques and the moves that we put into the fight scenes. <laughs> So one of the things I do when we go to work on a film is I make sure I surround myself with a really, really great team who is versatile in many ways. They're all excellent at fight choreography. They can all be stunt doubles, performers. So what we're gonna demonstrate here is something that we would do if we were training any actor, any new stunt person, so that when we are performing, we don't have to think about what our body's doing. We only need to think about performing and the choreography itself. You'll notice that the guys are turning, they're twisting. Now let's turn it into a cross and an uppercut. Now hook punches, guys, here we go, left. You guys just right into it. Yep, good. Excellent, good. And stop. Very nice. Who the hell are you? Bad guy. We have an opportunity to build the baddest bad guy the Fast and Furious franchise has ever seen. The goal was we want a really bad guy. One guy so capable of beating Hobbs and Shaw, not only individually, but both at the same time. I got him. No, I got him. You want a guy that's memorable within the series. They've had some really interesting bad guys, and they wanted one to sit above them all. Brixton is essentially a robot. And bringing that across so that the audience believed that was definitely a gift given to me as an actor. Look at me. A black Superman. Idris Elba. <laughs> he literally just said it on the set. A black Superman. And the second we heard it, all of us turned to each other and we're like, yeah, that's right. That's what that is. But that's 100% him. He's smarter, he's faster, he's stronger. And if you add in that Idris has also happened to be the current sexiest man in the world, you have a pretty formidable foil for our guys. You know he's going to bring pathos and gravitas to this character and all those things that you need in a great villain. There's some great sort of Shakespearean going on. I loved being on set with him. <laughs> Not for any other reason other than he's a wonderful man. You walk on set and you realize, oh, that's what a movie star looks like. <laughs> Who's gonna stop me? They rip on each other and it is this dynamic that they've set up. You think I'm stupid? Of course I think you're stupid. It makes you want to spend time with him. I got shot, God. No, 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 don't start. That. They're actually really good friends. I've known Jason now for a very long time, and there's not a lot of laughs with Jason. He doesn't smile a lot. Every once in a while, he will. I take great joy in making him laugh, and I do everything I can to make him laugh. I apologize in advance if it's a little loose around him. <laughs> there's a natural chemistry that they have that they really find these special angles and ways to tease and poke each other, that their friendship shines through in the characters that they're playing. I made a mistake. This is Anytime you make one of these movies, there's usually a set piece that becomes the anchor of the movie. This first set piece that everyone gets fired up about and you tend to start crafting a movie around it. Our descender rig sequence at the CIA is that set piece. In three, two, one, Brixton! How do you get all the bad guys in a CIA building? Yeah, they can come in the elevator, but we kind of had this idea, you know, what if these guys are going down? They have these little bombs, they throw them down the building as they're repelling down the outside. They go on the windows, they blow in. All of our heroes get taken out by the explosion. They swing in with, you know, Brixton and his bad guys. I love the action set pieces that just get bigger and bigger and bigger. I think you have to deliver on that idea. Let's raise the bar. Let's make sure that it had insane action, gravity defying <laughs> action sometimes because you have to defy gravity every once in a while. The idea of these guys, stories and stories above the ground, fighting, being attacked, having to jump out with these mercs running out the building. It is the core and the essence of our movie. We had such a blast filming it, all culminating in basically Hobbs taking guy, swinging him against a window just to tell Shaw F you. It's love at first sight. Russo's, it's time. <laughs>
family is a very critical element of the Fast and Furious universe. We all believe deeply in family and the power of family. So that lives and breathes in our DNA just as human beings. So we wanted to make sure that Hobbs and Shaw had that DNA. This is our dog. We were excited to bring these characters' backstories and family stories to the Fast audience. Getting to see these two epic heroes on their own is one thing. It's another thing when their mom is talking to them. Fat Edge! Suddenly, it brings it into a real world and more relatable context. My baby's home. Samantha is a smart girl. She's inquisitive. She's a little curious about like what her dad does and about her extended family. Is that your brother? The family tree is a social studies assignment she's doing, and she's having problems doing it because the only family she knows is her dad. She loves her dad, but I feel like she's determined to find her family because she knows there's more. Got a real cheek coming here after 25 years. Joan is feeling betrayed by his brother for many reasons, that he's gone for 25 years, that he locked his father up, that he's come back and he's got problems with him. I would rather die than help you! Jonah as a tech kid. He might not have had the resources to get a scholarship, or in Jonah's case, might have had the opportunity, but he held the responsibility of staying home with his family. You're crazy, brother. I like you, man. Mateo, he's a Hobbs brother, so I think in true fashion and proper form, my character Mateo would be a beast. He'll be right behind you. He might be a man of few words, very direct and, you know, get to the point. <laughs> I do believe I am the most handsome out of all the brothers, even though PJ might disagree with it. <laughs> but uh, it's up for opinion. <laughs> I am Timo. I'm the youngest, athletic, energized brother. Sometimes I can't believe that I'm actually here and doing this and, you know, getting to be a part of something great. I remember being on set that night and Dwayne's mom is there. It's the first time to see her son speaking Samoan in a giant global movie. He knows all the Samoan dances and a lot of the Samoan songs and he's nailing them. I'm so proud of him. Over the years, my mom has been my biggest fan. <laughs> So it was such a joy to have my mom on this particular set because she knew that we were showcasing our culture and our island of Samoa. His Samoan side is very strong because I kept it strong. That's why I get very emotional when I'm watching these scenes, you know? Especially when they do it over and over and over again. <laughs> You know, and another cool aspect about Hobbs and Shaw is I have waited my entire career to have fight scenes like this, raging and savage and primal, without guns. The guns are switched off, and it's just mano a mano in Samoa. <laughs> If we're gonna win this war, we're gonna win with this, we're gonna win with this, and we're gonna win with this. Listen to me, from Moscow to Samoa, that is not the easiest charter to get, but I got it. Oh, that's why we're calling you. Just know that whatever you need, you got yourself a third squaddy over here that can deliver. Doing the voice again. Yeah, listen, Dinkley, you don't have to do that voice with us, all right? Just talk normally. You probably hear a little bit of frog in my throat. I got up early this morning, got some clanging and banging in. 3.45 a.m., leg day. You and I both know you don't take leg days off. Shark machine, two dips. Carol! Remember that big thing I told you I was working on? Well, it just happened. I quit! Hi guys, here's today's daily fact. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is well known for his macho roles in movies like Jumanji, Rampage, The Fast and Furious Saga, The Scorpion King, you name it. But not many people know that eccentric director Tim Burton actually considered him for the role of Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Remember to click here below to subscribe on the side for more great content.